You've heard of Bitcoin. Well, what makes Bitcoin work? In order to function, Bitcoin relies on technology called blockchain. Now, this is where I get technical, so pay attention. This is essentially a shared ledger in which all transactions are recorded and protected by powerful encryption, which prevents anyone from making fraudulent changes. I didn't understand it either, but luckily we've got somebody who does. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, I'm joined by Lauren Gamaroff, who's chief executive of a company called Banky Moon, on the implications of blockchain with a new ceiling on transaction volumes, which has been out on Bitcoin transactions. Okay, blockchain. Do me a favor, and in any form of English, sure. from any century, explain it in a way that is digestible, please. Sure. So um, the, the blockchain is basically to the next generation what the internet was to the previous. Um, in its most basic form, it's just a revolutionary new technology which uh, enables people for the first time to be able to transfer the ownership of assets without having a, a trusted intermediary to um, manage that transfer. Okay, so at the moment, if I uh, bought uh, this phone from you um, and, and you posted it to me in the post or had it delivered, um, I would do an ETF, uh, uh, EFT, I beg your pardon, exchange funds transfer, right. mm -hmm. um, and you would receive the money um, through the banking system. I trust the banking system, you trust the banking system, uh, the, the, digits, the, the digital signal goes from my account into your account, you're happy that you are paid and the phone is in my hands and we're all happy. Blockchain doesn't need the bank. That's correct. So uh, if you want to now transfer funds using a blockchain, you don't have to go via a banking system to do that. Uh, you can transfer funds directly from one person to another. In the same way that uh, if you think about file sharing, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, uh, you can transfer a file directly from one person to another. Now we can transfer money electronically from one person to another. Uh, well, is it money? Um, because it depends on what you use the blockchain for, I suppose. I mean, you send me a block of chains and I get a block of chains. What value does it have in my hands? Yes, well, let's, let's just take it back a bit. Uh, when thinking about the blockchain, um, I think a good analogy for people to understand it is, uh, is the Internet. Now, um, the, the way the Internet works is that there's a, a lot of computers, uh, millions of computers around the world, and all of them are hosting websites. And if you want to now go and uh, uh, access a web page, you'll go and download content from that, that server. So now, uh, the way the blockchain works is, is uh, it has uh, the same sort of thing, but instead of web pages hosted around the Internet, there, there's a database and that database stores the record of ownership. Now, if you want to go and actually do that transfer, uh, what you can do is you can instruct that database that you want to move uh, funds from, one, from your account to somebody else's. So now the question you said is, well, is it money? Now, that, that is a question that everybody asks because uh, uh, obviously we know about the most famous use and the first use for uh, uh, blockchains, which is Bitcoin, the currency. Um, now, that's uh, an interesting use case. It's a currency that has, was actually uh, the original reason why Bitcoin, uh, blockchain was invented. Uh, it's a currency that's not controlled by any uh, central mm. bank or government. Um, but the question is now, why should we consider it money? Now, when thinking about it in terms of money, think about gold. Why do we value gold so much? What makes gold valuable to us? Well, it's a question of scarcity, is it not? So Correct. in the same way as the blockchain creates a scarce resource, uh, there is demand for that scarce resource, and the price will fluctuate according to sentiment of the value of that particular resource. Precisely. So it's not just the scarcity. It's also the other uh, properties that may have made gold so valuable as money over the last few thousand years. So it's a good unit of account, um, a good medium of exchange. It's fungible. Div divisible, durable. Um, now these properties, when uh, during the financial crisis of 2008, the original developers conceived of this uh, currency, they said, let's try and emulate those properties of gold. Um, and one of the most important properties, uh, if you want to have a good form of money, which is uh, the, uh, uh, such as gold, it has to be scarce. So there was an original uh, a, a law that was put in place that said... A law. A law? Yes. No, it's not a law. It's not a law governed a, by any country. A, not a law, no, no. but a, a law within the ecosystem. Yes, okay. That said, we will only ever have a certain amount of these uh, coins. In the same way, there's a, there's a finite amount of gold existing in the Earth's surface. Um, we will now create a limit to the number of uh, the quantity of these coins that can be created. And that adds that extra very important property for good money, scarcity. Mm. Okay, so there is scarcity. But Bitcoin, to my mind anyway, even amongst Bitcoin aficionados, has lost a little bit of credibility. People don't, are ne not necessarily buying the Bitcoin idea anymore. There is a little bit of reluctance and a bit of reticence in the Bitcoin market. However, blockchain provides an opportunity to transfer units of value. Mm -hmm. 
and it's that perceived unit of value. Now, how do, would I take money out of my bank account, or would it be my bank account, and put it in your bank account without going via the bank but using blockchain? Well, uh, it's, it's the same thing as saying, well, how would you acquire gold so that you can transact in an economy that's not governed by it? Uh, you but know. then I have a physical thing. I have a physical thing I can yes. see, and there is a pile of gold, yes. and I can put it into a little leather sack with a drawstring, right. and put, give it to a man on a horse who can mm. ride across town and deliver you the physical gold. Yes. How does it work in the world of blockchain? Right now, but uh, that is precisely why uh, Bitcoin is considered even better than gold, because of the fact that gold is, is physical and tangible. You need to uh, worry about it. You need to be concerned about the security. Also, if you want to buy something online, it's not very easy to send uh, gold around the planet. You know. Also, if you have a coin how do you pay small amounts. So the fact that it's intangible, the fact that it is digital, makes it better than gold as a currency. And that's why people have decided, uh, you know, we live in a digital world. This is the, the world we have today. It's not hard to imagine a, a digital asset that can have tangible value. Mm -hmm. Okay, but again, I still don't understand how I get my units of value to yes. you uh, and how you perceive value in my units of, of these things called bitcoins. Right. Now, around the world is hosted this blockchain, which is that database uh, that of ownership. Now, if you want to go and send me bitcoins, then what you can do is you can go and purchase them, just like you would go and purchase a, a Kruger Rand. And that value would be determined how? Because I would have to take real money. Yes, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, dollar money, rand mm -hmm. money, um, and buy those bitcoins. So somebody's coining it. Um, yes. And, and not just a bit, because they're getting real money in exchange for noughts and ones. Well, if you go and buy a Kruger Rand, you're buying a hunk of metal. Uh, the point is that uh, you pay the price uh, according to what somebody was willing to sell it, it's just to determine in a free market. Now, if you wanted to go and buy a Bitcoin right now, you could come to me and I would offer you a price. And if you were happy with the price, you would accept it. Or you could go onto an online exchange, and we have a good one in South Africa. You can go there and, and have a bid. You could say, right, I'm willing to buy a Bitcoin for this amount of money. And if somebody's willing to sell it, then they could do that. They could sell it to you. So it's a stock market then yes, for, a, for, for the, for the this currency. Correct. But let's go beyond Bitcoin and let's mm -hmm. look at blockchain because you've got a business that actually creates blockchain chain technologies for existing businesses. So in the real world, how would that exist? How would that work? Right now, it's, it's very early days and uh, people are starting to get a sense that blockchain is not just a fad or a Ponzi scheme or a scam. There's something real here. It's a technology. And in the same way, in the early 90s, the internet was an uncertain thing. How much value will it add? Uh, I mean, it was slow in those days and not many people had access to it. So we find ourselves right now in that same place where there's this buzz about blockchain that's happening. People are starting to see that there's value in it other than just a in terms of a currency. And um, now corporates and organizations and businesses and individuals, they're very interested in exploring these opportunities. But uh, it, as you said in the beginning of the show, it, uh, it's very hard to understand for most people. So uh, my company, Bank Your Moon, we now are specifically focused in uh, helping organizations navigate through this, uh, this new world and finding those opportunities so that they can take advantage of them. But in any transaction, you need a buyer and a seller. Now, it's all well and good that you're the seller. And how, wh where is your market of buyers? You, if you're an early mover in this world, you're not mm. wasting your time. Uh, well, it's, it's been around, the technology has been around for seven years. Yeah, but, so. but the technology has been around, but acceptance is still much, very much in the early stages, surely? Yes, uh, it is uncertain, just like the internet was uncertain. You know, a lot of very important, uh, famous people said, you know, the internet will never go anywhere. It will have the same uh, impact on the, on the world as the fax machine. That's a famous quote from mm. Paul Krugman. But uh, so right now we don't see, we, we cannot understand the future. You know, the internet was difficult to imagine. We could, I mean, when I was in mm. the 90s, Skype was science fiction. Um, in the same way, we can see the, un the, the, the beginnings of something very interesting here. Now, it's going to take some time before all those use cases can be teased out. But how do you monetize it? I mean, you're running a business based on a technology that will, at some point in the future, gain great, gain great and greater acceptance. I, I believe that simply on mm -hmm. the basis of people, for example, doing cross-border money transfers at the moment. You go to your bank, somebody goes to a bank on the other side, and somewhere in between you lose a, a couple of percentage points of the value mm -hmm. of your money. The idea of blockchain is that much leaves here, that much arrives on that end, and the real value is realized. So I accept that about blockchain. Yes. But how long is it going to take you to monetize this idea? We're well, going to have to wait tables at night time in return <laughs> and, and, and to get grand tips to survive. Uh, not necessarily. Uh, from my point of view, uh, I find that there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of business potential here. Uh, there are real companies, banks and other financial companies and um, auditing companies and even law firms that now can see that this technology is going to be able to streamline and improve their own internal processes. And they're, they're very keen to, to uh, put uh, money and uh, research and development into 
to this technology to be able to realize that potential. So they know it can, it's going to change their world, they just don't know how yet. Yes, we, we, we're starting to get an inkling of it. Uh, 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 remember, blockchain isn't just about currency or money moving around. Those tokens can represent any real-world asset. You can have your car that's represented by a token on the blockchain, and then you can send that token to somebody. And if, uh, if uh, um, we have a law that says whoever owns that token owns the car, we've now already eliminated Where a lot Where are we of globally in terms of legislation around blockchain? Because I can only imagine that this scares the living daylights out of people like Janet Yellen and Lissit Yachanyaho and other regulators around the world to say, hold on a second, we like the way it works in, mm. in our world where we put bits of paper, we put RAND on it, we know how many of those we've printed, we know how many of these things change hands, we know how many sit within our system. Suddenly you start creating in the uh, alchemy of the internet um, these, these blockchain units of value and nobody's got any control anymore. That is very true. And uh, there is a concern, although at this stage, you, you know, it's not very widely spread. Not very many people actually own Bitcoin. Um, but it is a concern because it does mean now people can transact outside of a, an economy that can be controlled. So there is uh, issues for law enforcement with money laundering and um, terrorism, perhaps. Um, although at this stage, those uses are very small. Um, but just remember, uh, uh, nothing lasts forever. And we, we've seen companies that have uh, dominated their niche and and with a new technology, new innovation, have had to either change their business model entirely or become obsolete. But are regulators anywhere close to getting a handle on what blockchain means? They're, they're actively uh, studying it and researching it, but uh, there's no consensus around the world what this is. Uh, you know uh, what it is. Is it a currency? Is it a commodity? Is it just a technology? So um, although some countries are um, uh, trying to come up with uh, legislation, they, you know, in New York they have a bit license. Um, at this stage, it's still uncertain where this thing fits. What what is it? And um, uh, I think uh, 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 what's happening is that there's more of a wait and see and approach. Um, they can see a lot of people can see that there's going to be a lot of positive value that can be added here, and perhaps it, it will be a little bit um, short-sighted to now try and stamp this uh, the mm -hmm. potential out with regulation before we s can see where this goes, which is the same as what happened with the internet. Yeah, I mean, all we're going to need, as I suppose, is one big scandal to force regulation. We've had several. But a big one. Well, what's as big? Don't I don't know what big. I mean, I don't know. Something that precipitates a crisis of some description, a crisis of confidence. Then yes. the regulators will act. But what a fascinating insight into the world of, of blockchain. Lorian Gamarov is the chief executive of a business called Banky Moon. Name, was you, did you name it after the, the UN General Secretary? Uh, yes, it was inspired by him, but it fits well for a blockchain company with a banky sort of um, highlighting the fintech aspect and the moon, which is a, a Bitcoin meme. Where's the price going to go to the moon? Lovely. Banky moon. There we go. Thank you for watching. There'll be more money makers tomorrow. Good night for now. Bye bye.